G'day folks, welcome to this week's episode of Learn to Paint TV. Going to do something a little bit different today. We're going to do a, a nice little country laying in the bush. And uh, I picked this one because it has some really strong darks in the foreground and middle distance and little hints of light down the path. And it makes quite a nice composition. And uh, we're going to start off with a little flat brush, this one here. It's just a little small flat brush. And I've got ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson up on the board there. And notice I'm doing this in a portrait shape. Okay, so um, I have versions of this photo in, uh, in landscape shape as well, which I'll put up for our Learn to Paint Club members who have access to the full version. Uh, but this one we're going to do in a portrait shape. So let's get underway with step one. First thing I'll do is take a little bit of water on the brush. Take some of the blue and the red paint. We'll just mix those together. And if you've been with us for a while, you'll know. I like to mix up a dark and use that as my drawing colour. But keep that paint thin. Okay, so I'm using the Atelier Interactive Paints. Um, keep that paint thin for the drawing for step one. Now, as always, the horizon line is a good place to start. And we never want to put our horizon line right on the halfway mark. So I want to just drop it below there. And uh, again, not on the halfway mark in the canvas. So I'll just bring it to there. And that's going to be the sort of vanishing point of our little path here. And then the path sort of winds its way like so. And has some interesting, you know, overgrown shapes to it as well. But it sits somewhere like that. So that's a good starting point to, uh, to work towards. So that means we have this horizon line that runs somewhere through there. And with that, we have a row of distant trees. Okay, so I'm just going to just map some of those in. I'll keep it a little bit low at the point where the path enters into the bush there. And we've got some that rise up like so and finish around about there. Okay, so that's a little bit of a backdrop of, of uh, bushes and things in the background. We don't need to really get much more than that into this painting, I don't believe. That probably needs to come out a little bit wider um, because we're gonna have lots of grasses and things in here. There's a couple of foreground trees that sit up in here. Okay, they go over these background ones and then they run down into about there. And then our main sort of tree is going to run from here up to right about, it's kind of in line with that point there. So it's gonna to run to about there. It's going to look something like that. And it's a nice, big, solid dark. Okay, so we're gonna get some blue sky. We don't want it that blue though. So we don't want it out of the tube blue. That's a little bit too happy, happy blue, right? Pop it there and I'll put a pinhead of red, a tiniest little bit, like I'm talking a tiny little bit of the yellow ochre in there. You won't even see it. And some white, not a huge amount of white, just enough to lighten it back a bit, okay? Touch more. Okay, maybe a touch too much. We'll add a little bit more blue back into that. And that's probably something like what we want. Now, there's a lot of cloud in here. So what I want to do is just establish the blue part of the sky first. Okay, and we'll just make the edges random, which is why I switched to this brush. Okay, you can see that, I've, and all I've done, I've just scrubbed that around, just back and forward like that. Let the brush do the work. Okay, and we've got all these random edges. We can adjust the edges, okay, um, as we go. I'll pop a few blue spots in the trees there, okay. So we can adjust those edges. We get a little bit more here now, and we'll just run some blue sky in through there. Nice and random, okay. Now, don't come down too low with this blue because by the time it gets down close to the horizon, that would need to be lightening off, okay. So don't get that dark blue too far down. Now I'm putting this up, but I really don't know whether I've got the right tones or not. Just looking at it now, and, and I'm feeling that the blue part is a little bit too dark. However, that's because I've got a, everything else is white on the canvas currently. It can be a little bit deceiving. Maybe, right, but the thing with painting is that every color you put up there needs to relate to another color. And so until I get the darks in, I'm not going to worry about that. If I feel that it's too, 
the blue is too dark later on, after I've got the other darks in, I'll come back and adjust. So we'll know soon enough. I do feel it on the bottom there, at that horizon point, it's a little bit too dark. So I'll just work some of this lighter tone in. Fairly random. Okay. Soften those edges. Don't, make sure you don't have too many hard edges. But if you're using this brush and you're just scrubbing it around as I'm showing you, you shouldn't have to worry about that. It's got to be darker than that blue in the sky though, theoretically. Let's just test that. Get some broken colour in there, which is good. Now these are trees, right? A row of trees, so they're going to have random edges. This is the Australian bush we're looking at here. So the edges are quite random. enough paint which is always a bother. So again notice that all I'm doing here is giving it a really good scrub. Work that paint into the canvas. Got some flecks of red and blue in there which is good. That creates some warm and some cool passages in there which that variety will help you uh, create some tension and interest in the painting. Not too much, we don't want a huge amount going on in the middle distance there, but enough. Okay, okay. So it's quite a bit darker. Just be careful when I get up into that sky area too much. I don't want to lighten the paint by hitting that white. Okay, and the same when I come down over here. Let's have a look over this side. Now over this side I want to just not go up as high and I want to tap in the tops of, actually I need to just block it all in because I've got white canvas there, but where I've got the sky section just tap over some nice little rounded shapes. Okay, so these aren't going to come down as far, I'm going to bring them down to somewhere in here. Now, paint's drying reasonably quickly here, which is good because this paint under here, it's a little bit tacky, but um, I, I can just work over it as long as I use enough paint and don't do too many brush strokes against it. Okay, that's got a reasonably good little shape there for a tree. I'm happy with that. So you can see now that those trees we put in first, this row in here, that's very much now sitting in the background, in the distance, and these two are, you know, are quite a bit more forward. And that's exactly what we were working towards. So, well done. That's where we're going to place all of our grasses and things over there. But what we want to do is we want to get some red and some yellow. Okay, just get a nice warm tone. And I just want to run some of that in where we're going to have this light passage. It's going to really be through in there. See this light popping up there. Because when we put some, you know, highlighted grasses over this red, it's going to look good. Okay, and I'll have it there. I'll have it too far down towards the bottom here. So it's going to be that sort of section there. The tree's going to run out of there. It's all looking good. Okay, fill that in there. Try and eliminate any white canvas, although for a few specks here and there, I'm not gonna fuss about, okay? A little bit of shadow running over the path there. All good. And I've run out of paint quite a, at a good time, which is good. Okay. 
Okay. So I'm quite happy with that. I think the sky is starting to, as it dries, starting to uh, look good. The path's working, you know, it's sort of meandering its way up into the bush there at the back. We want it to disappear around the corner behind some bushes there, which it looks like it's doing. Let's just block in some tone in there, just as an underpainting. I just want to get rid of that white. We may not keep it this color at all. Okay, well I think that brings us to the end of step two. We've blocked it all in. It, it does look quite dark at the moment, apart from our lighter sky, but we're going to bring it all up. We, we'll add some mid-tones to a lot of these trees and um, so a little bit of highlight with a you know, real belt of highlight where the sun's clipping through here. And then another strong dark with the tr main tree up there. And um, I think it'll bring it all together quite nicely. So uh, get up to this point, then let it, we'll let it dry, you know, probably a couple of hours, there's some thick paint in there. Um, we'll come back in a couple of hours and we'll do step three, where we start to bring it all together by putting on our highlights, our details, and all those little finishing touches. So I'll have a break and I'll see you after that for step three. Cheers. Okay, welcome back folks. We're now going to do step three of the more method of painting, which is of course all of our highlights, details, and finishing touches. I'm pretty happy the way this one's looking and it's all dried off quite nicely. And I think we've got a nice value structure, got our darks stepping back into the distance. And I'm pretty sure this blue's working, especially when I put this big tree in through there. So um, things are going well. Maybe another little branch running off there. Uh, so to get that, we want a nice big dark. So we'll go to the blue and the red. And as we know, those two make a good solid dark. Don't add the yellow in because when you add that third primary, it tends to gray it off a little bit, which we want this to be really, it's pretty much going to be our darkest dark in the painting. So I'm just going to use, I've got my medium sized flat brush. I'm just going to use that end rather than the flat face of it initially to get my drawing in. And I want it to terminate around about here. And I want it to start around about here. And uh, I'm just going to... Do one nice big bold shape there. And I, and I flatten the brush out as I got down towards the bottom just to widen out the base there. Let me stand back and have a look. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I will make it a little thicker. So I'll take a bit more paint. There's a few spots there where the paint did break up. I'll just touch those up. Make it a bit thicker through there. And we'll anchor it in with some grasses and things around the edges. Now, I'll just drop to a smaller brush, just the next size down. Some more of this paint. I'm just loading the tip of the brush there. You can see that. Okay, and I'm going to run one through there. And what's good about this is I'll be able to put some nice uh, highlights on these trunks. Not too many, because they're mostly in shadow, but a few little touches here and there won't hurt. And up through here, I'll just run Well, it's lighting up all through here. So what that means is we're going to have patches of this green here, but don't lose the darks. I know I say it, you know, often, but it's never been truer in this painting that we don't want to lose the darks that we've already established there. And what you can do if you want, you can just pop a few out into the open Sky. They're like little mushroom shapes. 
best way I can describe these. I'll just mix a little bit of dark into them as I come into the body of the tree here. Okay, now don't use this tone for that back row of trees because it's too strong for them. Okay, let's go back and have a look, that's good. So that's still all largely shadow, which you'll see when I clip it with um, some highlight a little bit later. So I've got this band of light that's running through the center here and um, it's mostly in the grasses. So we're going to go blue and a big chunk of this yellow. So it's a really bright yellow, although the way I mix it in there you wouldn't know. So what we'll do is we'll just we'll run the edge up like that and um, let's just test this here. Okay, it's looking a little bit too... I don't know, it needs to just be grey back a little, so I'll put a bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of red in there. It's a little bit too vibrant. Okay, so I'm not doing, I'm just really lightly touching the brush. Through there. So just building up some textures now in these grassier areas with a real focus on that light band. Okay, now to bring that into context, what we need to do is hit some light on the path here and then some shadow in other areas. And this is going to be a really important part, I think. So we'll get a chunk of this white before it runs off the, on the floor. Pinch of the red. Okay. And it wants to be a fair bit lighter than what's already there. Like so. Why don't you just clip a little bit of that grass colour back over on the edges just to settle it down. Just lightly over the top. Whoop, that's why I don't want too much on the brush. I don't want it to come off clumpy. Working out some little light patterns there. I think we've just about got that right now. Sloppy, so I'll just darken that tone there. And these little patches of colour and so on create a bit of a dappled light kind of an effect. All right, next step I think we should do is to mix up a highlight tone. Which we'll take this white, a chunk of the white, take a clean piece of the yellow ochre, 
mix those together. And I want to do this just subtly, this uh, highlight. But it's definitely there. And I think done right will really add to it. We're going to highlight some clips on this tree and a couple of spots on these other trees as well. Let me have a look at that. It's good. Probably add a bit more emphasis, I think, on this main tree. So I'll just thicken it up in a few spots. Well, folks, I think we'll leave it there. Um, I think it's come up reasonably well as a you know, a little demo, a little study painting um, showing the highlights in the tree, the foliage, and where the light's really clipping through on the grasses here. I think uh, that's good. The sky, I think, works. So remember before I was saying the blue might be too dark, but when I've got everything else on, I think it works okay. Um, we've got our darker back row, ground row of trees through there, and we've created the nice atmosphere and we've demonstrated some light happening in the painting as well. There's lots of little details you could do to really continue to work with this, but as a demonstration um, practice piece, I think um, I'm going to leave it there. Have a go at this one. I think you'll find an enjoyable painting and you'll learn a little bit about creating that effect of sunlight coming through the trees, which is always a good thing to, uh, to want to paint. So I um, hope you've enjoyed this episode and make sure you drop by our website at www.learntopaint.tv. I look forward to seeing you next week on Learn to Paint TV. Cheers for now.